Today I want to show you three different ways to make drum beats in Reaper and also some techniques to enhance your songs and the music that you're working on. When working on music, the drums play a significant role when it comes to bringing those parts alive, whether it be riffs, chord progressions, and also it helps with the form. The drums can really enhance those sections and help differentiate different parts of your song. So in writing a song, I like to start with the sections. I like to define sections, verses, choruses, pre-chorus. I first create sections and then play a game of arranging by messing around with the instrumentation and the order of each section. For our verse, we're going to use the step sequencer. For our pre-chorus, we're going to use the MIDI keyboard. You could also use something like uh, MIDI drum pads or anything of the sort. And for the chorus, we're going to use a virtual instrument and this is going to demonstrate how you can make uh, MIDI drum parts. Okay, so to get started, obviously we need a new track and we're going to use the sequencer. We can use the one that comes with Reaper, which is called Mega Baby Sequencer. I made a video already explaining a little bit more in depth how the sequencer works. And what I'm going in the kit that I'm going to use contact. And that sequencer is going to be triggering this virtual instrument, the Butch Big Drums, which is an add-on I believe for the contact library. So like I said for the verse, we're going to set up a groove with the sequencer. The way I like to work is to get the drums first. So I'm going to make a pattern on the sequencer and from there I'm probably going to add bass or some kind of riff and you know just get going from there but for me the drums always come first and then i play to that and start from the bottom up all right so this is the pattern that i came up with all right from there i grabbed my guitar and i started writing a riff for some reason i chose the key of g minor doesn't really matter um from here it's just i like to play to the drums that's how the riffs just start coming to me is if I have uh, drums, click track, something kind of grooving in the background for me. So I played around a little bit and this is what I got. So what I'm using here is Guitar Rig 6 and I'm using a preset. I tweaked it only a little bit, just fine tuning some tone things. And the way I like to fake the guitar because I don't have a bass is I use repitch and then I shift it down one octave. I only do that until the end after I'm done recording. Otherwise, if you try to play with that on, there's going to be some serious delay. And then to add some variety to the drums, I kept the same pattern, but I switched it with kind of like a little tag at the end of the riff where it goes into the um, kick drum and it's just quarter notes. So the whole thing ends up sounding like this. And here it is again, just to change it up a little bit. And then for the pre-chorus, I'm going to be playing on the MIDI keyboard. So one key feature here is the recording mode, because if you're like me and you're not too good at finger drumming, you're going to need this one. This one saves, saves my life if this is something I need to do. So I created another track over here and I'm going to keep the same virtual instrument. At this point, um, I want to keep consistency and texture, dynamics. This is all pretty much pre-mix. If I were to throw something different in here, it might throw it off like in a way that I don't want it to. So, so using the same kit, I'm going to play a drum pattern. So the key here is that when you're going to record, make sure that your record mode is in MIDI and make sure that it's overdub. So then what I'll do is create a time selection here, make sure repeat is on, and then it's going to loop that section in which I want to perform uh, the next uh, groove. So I first played the kick and the snare and then just kind of started with that to set up the pattern. And of course, beautifully used, quantized a little bit. And then what I do on the second pass, I started playing uh, this. And again, when it keeps looping, anything that you start playing on top of it is going to get recorded in that overdub mode. And then the last thing I layered on top of this was
and that's it that was the drum pattern for the pre-chord i wanted to bring it down in dynamics and then with the bass what i was thinking i was like let's build some tension because it's a pre-chorus and it should lead to something bigger at least that's the idea and what i did i just ascended the scale with a very specific rhythmic pattern and then i came up with this And then for the last part, we're going to use one of the grooves that comes with the Butch Big instrument. So with that, I'm using the same, uh, the second track for this. And here, as you can see, a lot of these virtual instruments work in a similar way where you play live or they come with predefined grooves. For example, this one, the kit I've been using is called uh, Dead Room, which it's interesting that they that's a BPM that they suggest. I don't know if you could see. Um, we're a little bit faster than that. We're at 145 for this one. And I ended up cycling through these and the way and I ended up going with one of these. So in cycling through these, I like the intro ones. Uh, the other ones were super aggressive. That's that's just madness. Um, the, the chorus is, is going to go crazy. And I tried some of these. It, it's a, a lot of trial and error. And I tried coming up with parts and I, ju I just couldn't do it. These um, The patterns are very, very specific and I just had trouble writing to it. So the ones that I liked were the simplest ones or the, the least busy ones, which were the intros. And a lot of these, uh, are, like I said, work in a similar way for this one. And drag the MIDI file over here. And then it's there. You have options. So if you open, you can even, if um, you're feeling ambitious, you could play over this. You could record over this with the overdub feature. You can edit this. Um, as you can see, these are already like the, the dynamics are set in, the velocity is set in, the pattern is kind of set. So sometimes it's uh, tricky and time consuming to mess with these. The only time I mess with these is when I know what I want like I need something very specific like if I have a riff on the bass on a guitar and the drums is not quite matching that in the way that I want and I know exactly what I want to do that's usually how I lose the least amount of time otherwise I try to stick to it and this one I was happy with it just the way it was and I came up with a couple of parts to go on top of this and then I ended up with a longer chorus section and ended up also writing a bass riff for it I also started getting ahead of myself and recording a uh, guitar part. At this point, I would start playing the arranging game. I'd start coming up with melodies to go on top, different instruments, different textures, and I start. I would start also playing with the layers, like I might have a drum intro or maybe just a bass start on its own and start defining uh, parts like that. I have another video that goes in depth on arranging and how to arrange specifically in Reaper. So if that's something you're interested in, once you get to this point, um, please check that out guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you have any questions Please leave those in the comment section I'm also interested to hear about your creative process if you're like me You're like writing to drums or do you start with something else? Do you come up with your riffs first and then put the drum parts on top of it? It's always super interesting for me to know how everybody comes up with music because I know we all do it a little bit different That being said don't be attached to my method I just wanted to demonstrate in context how this works for me and I hope that it gave you some ideas, some techniques to work for you. Thanks so much for watching.